Do you grab your phone the moment you get a social media notification? Or are you trying to tune out? It's proven that the average American spends what, over two hours a day on social media. That is a lot of hours over the course of a lifetime. Social media expert Susie Moore, author of Stop Checking Your Likes and Let It Be Easy, says how you decide to connect is literally in your hands. Social media is actually a very neutral tool. It's up to us whether it's healthy or unhealthy based on our own personal use of it. What are some tangible ways that we, especially as women, can make social media less stressful and turn it into a more positive outlet in order to live better lives? Our relationship with anything in our life is determined by how we how we allow it in and our own intention for its use. Follow accounts that make you feel good. If something's making you feel heavy or inadequate or as if you're behind or you're not good enough, limit your visibility to it. We're, we are able to do this with a simple click. And I personally only want to follow accounts that uplift me, that make me laugh. Social media is not reality. <laughs> you have to take it with a pinch of salt. Good Good or bad, uh, pictures of vacations, pictures of what people are purchasing, pictures, oh my gosh, private jets, we see it all. Remember that that is like really a 5% window into that person's life. It is the best part. It's highly skewed. How do likes and comments contribute to the need of our social media approval and our, our self-worth? Mm. It's a funny thing, isn't it, when we we look at a number of likes or we, we look at comments and we think that that means something about our own worthiness. I often joke, you know, if aliens came to Earth and saw us on our phones looking for hearts and words on a screen <laughs> and, ha and having that be how we evaluate how important we are or how special we are, they would fly off planet Earth and go, that's a strange place. <laughs> so likes comments engagement is fun and again if it if you're enjoying it if it brings you you know some some joy some laughter that's one thing but if uh, you know a lack of likes or very few comments means that you feel bad about yourself this is when we need to just come back to the truth and and look you know and really ask the question if i have 11 likes or 33 likes does this have any impact on who i am as a person <laughs> or my future or how skilled and lovable i am and if something is posted and it's you know there's less engagement that's interesting move on there are plenty of posts in your future so from <laughs> selena gomez to sarah highland there mm -hmm. has been a trend of celebrities taking a hiatus from social media for a more peaceful and less judgmental life why do you think that is I think it's extremely healthy when we take breaks from anything that is really trained to be addictive. Like social media, you know, apps and platforms are designed to really be sticky, to hold our attention. And it's very easy just to get caught up in that and spend hours of your day looking at other people's lives, paying attention to what's going on out there, versus really focusing on ourselves. So when we have that healthy disconnect, a temporary or long-term break, we're able just to come back to our own center. And like with anything else, it's great and healthy to have breaks if something just feels like it takes up a lot of time in your life and mental space. We don't have to get sucked in. No one's forcing you putting a phone in your hand going, look, look, look. I know, you know, these tools, as we said, are, are created to be addictive, but the boundaries and the parameters that we create are up to us. And if something makes you feel bad, stop looking at it. If you don't see it, it can't bother you. How can we schedule our lives so we don't burn out? Mm. Oh, well, so burnout is so real. I've seen all the data and statistics around it. We need to be honest with what it is that's causing our energy drain. Because some things, what, what energizes and fuels a person, one person can absolutely drain and deplete another. It's actually a very helpful exercise. Very few people do this, but actually to write out on an average day how you spend your time. Honestly, no one's gonna see this but you, but like literally like look at a day. What did you spend one hour on social media in the morning? Shower working on this project, two Zoom meetings, gone for a walk. If you literally like look at your day hour by hour, you see where your time goes. And often it's a real shock to people. When I've done this exercise, they they often go, wow, I didn't realize I spent so much time doing, often social media crops up as one of the big time suckers. And scheduling time for ourselves, right? Yes, exactly. So if you say, you know, I never have time for a bath, I never have time for a massage, I never have time to read a book, look at how you spend your day. I am yet to find or work with a person who doesn't have these wasted pockets of time throughout the day that they have not really been conscious of. 
Amazing. Such great information, Susie. Thank you so much. And for more wellness advice, tune into Susie's podcast, Let It Be Easy with Susie Moore. Susie, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much.